Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to Wolfsburg, Germany and hiding behind our ID5 GTX, which we will have plenty of videos coming on this car, is something I can't show you. Actually, that's what we've been telling you the last few weeks because we've been filming with prototypes. I can show you this one and I am so excited and thrilled to be able to present to you one of my dream cars. This is a bucket list day where I will be driving a supercar built for efficiency. And before we get into anything, I want to say a huge massive thank you to our friends at Volkswagen. Without their help from the communications team and department, especially our new friend Ruth, this would not be possible to bring the most incredible car Volkswagen ever built right here on our YouTube channel to share with you. So hiding behind this ID5 GTX is something I've been wanting to make a video with for years and years. And today is the day we finally get to do this. Um, let's first start talking about the electrification world at Volkswagen at a very high level, very, uh, you know, sort of broad spectrum. This is now the third model into production on the MEB chassis. So with the first, the ID3, then ID4, now ID5, and more models are to come. Volkswagen's really taking, in my opinion, the biggest approach to embracing EVs than almost any other existing automaker before this new startup craze. And it's pretty impressive too, because this car was engineered and built over the last few years and it's still relevant today. While it might not have the crazy 800 volt charging infrastructure and everything like this, or the battery architecture as some of the newer stuff, it's still an awesome car. We recommend it all the time. And as you know, in the US, ID4 is one of my favorite electric cars on sale. So Volkswagen has figured out how to bring the fun, the energy, the excitement back into their new electrified vehicles. You can see it's got a bit of personality with this eye design. They drive really nice. This one's the really sporty one. I can't wait to take this out on some fun roads and see how it does. But it all started years ago with the move to making efficiency cool. And that I think is the underlying theme for this video. We have spent time filming insanely fast cars on racetracks and doing some really cool stuff in really cool cars. But what Volkswagen has managed to do is to make efficiency cool. So just remember this, this topic here because join me where I pop these doors open and just from the rear, you might be able to get a glimpse as to what I'm going to show you. This, my friends, if you join me around the side is the Volkswagen XL1. <laughs> I have been wanting to say that for so long to present this car to you. And it really is the coolest form of efficient motoring. It's a supercar built to sip fuel. And I'm going to walk you through some of the high level specifications, but we're also going to be able to meet some of the people involved with this car. Um, and, and I can't wait to tell the story with you. We are here in the heart of Wolfsburg, Germany. And what's crazy is every car in, in Wolfsburg is a Volkswagen. There's one, there's a million over there. Literally every car over here for the most parts of Volkswagen, it is actually. And this car, it's taken an hour to get to this point where we could film this video because so many people have been coming up wondering what it is. It's so crazy. And this is the sort of outcome of years, over 15 years of development to build a vehicle that can get less than one liter per 100 kilometers of fuel consumption. So it's 0.9 liters per 100 kilometers in the NEDC cycle, which is not so much used anymore, but WLTP wasn't invented back then. It was at the time the most efficient car ever built. It's a plug-in hybrid, 5.5 kilowatt hour battery pack with an 800 cc two-cylinder combustion diesel engine in the rear. And it's a plug-in hybrid, but it's got so many crazy things because this is really the first form of electrification in Volkswagen, it has an offboard AC charger to save weight in the vehicle. Everything was crazy about weight savings. For example, the entire body structure is made completely of, of carbon and it's only 1.2 millimeters thick. So everything is just so thin. And you can see the entire chassis here is CFRP. It's a monocoque and it's sort of like a supercar to save weight, to make it stiffer so that you don't need as much structural support in other areas. It's crazy expensive, well over 100,000 euros when it went on sale. 250 of them were built in series production. This is one of the 50 that went into the development cycle. So this is a development XL1 owned by Volkswagen. 
and 200 were actually retail sold to customers. So there are some people out there who are hopefully still daily driving these things. I, I really hope so. It's a raw car. There's not much, you know, sound insulation or bushing. This is, you know, no compromise. Everything is to make it as fuel sipping as possible. The tire size, by the way, Michelin OE developed tire just for this project, which is really cool. 115 millimeters wide. So it's a 115-80 R15, uh, completely designed uh, aero caps here. The whole structure is designed sort of in a shark form. What I'm gonna do is actually close down the doors here really quick and they close, they're super light. <laughs> it is just amazing. amazing. Total fanboying over here, over this thing. And if you take a look of its profile, it's actually this very slipstream. It's very wide in the front and it tapers down in the rear. It has a built-in aero scoop to reduce wind turbulence on the rear. Everything is totally carbon. Everything is designed for maximum efficiency. And today we get to drive it and experience it and drive it around really the area where it was engineered. And hopefully we'll learn about the car share some information with you along the way. But I thought also it was fitting to have the ID5 here because this is where it all started for Volkswagen. And you know, we cover the ID models every day we're talking about these cars. This is the Genesis, and this is now the real mass series production byproduct of a lot of the work that was done back here to learn about efficiency and how to make efficiency cool, in my opinion. So. What do you say we go for a ride, go for a drive. We're gonna take this all around Wolfsburg. We're gonna go into some beautiful areas outside. We're gonna definitely get it out on the road and see what kind of efficiency we can get in it. And um, yeah, just, just a bucket list day. Thank you guys for watching. Without your viewership, we wouldn't be able to do cool stuff like this. And again, a huge thanks to Volkswagen for inviting us here to Wolfsburg to spend a day with their XL1. Let's get to it. Join me inside of the XL1 for the first time and what a cool experience. The second seat here is a little bit farther back and the reason for this is because it has to be as narrow as possible for efficiency. Um, yeah, we gotta crank the AC, it's really hot. We have like a heat wave going on in Germany. It's going to be 100 degrees. How do you turn the radio down? You push this little button, little Garmin head unit right here on the dash. I think we're at 60% state of charge on the high voltage battery. I do know if you go too hard on the air conditioning though, it will turn on the combustion engine. So into drive and there's a sport as well. No power steering is my understanding. So we're just going to come up this way. And it seems like the electric motor is in front of the dual clutch situation. You can hear the electric motor going. And today the whole idea is just to experience the XL1. I'm gonna tell you more about the car as time goes on. Pretty good turning radius. Um, and we're just gonna ex experience this together. You can see we have Jordan in the ID5 GTX in front of me. It's sort of a Volkswagen day. One of the reasons that I'm actually in the car by myself is there's a really crazy obstacle with, with millimeters of space underneath the vehicle that we need to clear. And so a Volkswagen representative, our new friend Ruth, she's awesome. She actually launched this car for Volkswagen back in the day. This has been her project from the beginning. And one of the best parts about my job is when I ask to do, you know, review or to try out cool cars like this, the people in the company get so excited. They are like, wow, we haven't been able to talk about this car for years. Let's make it happen. And the fact that they're just excited to share this car with all of you as I am is really a cool experience. And so right now we're just going to do one last check to see if we can get over this crazy obstacle. If we went one way, we should be able to go the next. And then <laughs> there's Ruth getting a, a picture of it right there. So let's see if it scrapes. Let's hope not. Good. Yep. So we're clearing and Ruth will hop in the car in a second. We're just going to cruise around Wolfsburg in this thing, which will be really quite neat. It has creep, but all of the controls feel a little bit, you know, archaic. You have to come completely off the brake and then it applies throttle. So let's pick up Ruth and spend the day in the XL1. So heading out on the roads for the first time. Yep. The, I don't I don't totally trust the mirrors yet. So 
we have it in hybrid mode. We could lock it in full electric, but right now the diesel engine's helping drive us along. The shifts are very smooth, really nice. But I could lock it, I think, in electric now, and then it will do its best to think about it and then go to electric mode as soon as it can. But we won't do it. Um, in the diesel mode, basically, there's no sound absorption in this particular one, and so you really hear and feel everything. There's no bushings, no motor crazy uh, dampening anywhere. Um, but you were saying in the in the production customer version, it's a bit quieter? It's a little bit, yes. Little they bit. have made a little bit of acoustic dampening here behind the monocoque as well. Yeah, yeah and that's... Uh, I, I kind of like it like this because this is no compromise, total efficiency, and what an insane machine. So cruising along, you can see it's pretty smooth off the line as the clutches come in, into second gear instantly. And there's even a sport shift on the transmission. So let's try just some acceleration, assuming we don't run this guy over. So we'll slow down a little bit and do a little city burst. You holding on, Ruth? Yep. All right, let's see how it goes. Whoa. It sounds really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't well, expect this it. This was now a diesel engine. Yeah. Plus electric drive. Right. So we as had a boosting function. As a boosting, we can go, we can go, go straight. straight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. And you can see, even going with that hard acceleration, it turned the air conditioning off momentarily to give us everything it had. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. So it's just about between 12 and 13 seconds, zero to 60 miles per hour. Um, yeah, 100K is 12.7, right? So 60 would probably be 12.5, 12.4, but it was never homologated for the US, so we don't have EPA numbers or our zero to 60 acceleration time. But I have to say, cruising it around, it idles at 1500 RPM, a little two cylinder, and it just is a grunty little thing. Now, it's not meant to be a performance car. I wanted to try the acceleration one time, but this is all about maximum efficiency. So I think we're gonna try and save some battery because we're gonna hit some good roads later on. And when you have combustion with electric is when you get the total full power, but just cruising in the city, it's amazing. And everyone looks at it. It just stops the whole town. What a dream it is to drive this thing. And the mirrors, I, as I'm getting used to them, work really nicely. The steering's quite nice, small, but I fit pretty well and the, the, the whole seat is a carbon bucket really, so it's very easy to basically, you know, fit inside. They made it for, for American sized people, thankfully. And just in love with this whole package. No power steering, but it's not hard to turn. Unless well, you drive steering. also steer. left out due to weight. Yep. We have 795 kilograms. Right, 795 total, kilograms. So everything that is... Uh, added weight is just left out, out, out of this car. Yeah, and that's why you hear every single cobblestone we're hitting and everything like this. Great, well, we're heading over to uh, the Autostadt now for lunch, which is this amazing sort of Volkswagen-themed car museum. And uh, I'm really excited to see what they think when we bring this over to them. It should be quite interesting. Well, we've pulled up at uh, the Autostadt, which is really the, the Volkswagen, you know, museum. There's just, look at this, there's a beetle in a glass cage in the parking lot. There's a golf in the other one. There's a whole bunch of electric, or I guess on the end, a plug-in hybrid van, but all the electric Volkswagens that you're able to test drive and experience. And um, what a cool place. By the way, if you see this tower off in the distance, that's where they actually do factory delivery for some vehicles. So you can pick up your new car, a conveyor belt grabs it. But what a neat experience it is to be able to bring the XL1 sandwiched between two ID5s. Everyone here, of course, is a Volkswagen enthusiast. So people come up, take photos, really interesting. And, and after the first drive around town, I'm just so impressed with it. It's actually got a lot more grunt uh, than you would think with a total, I think, of just under 60 kilowatt power output. It actually moves good, but again, it doesn't really weigh anything. So that's, that's pretty nice. I'm, I guess I could equate it to we own an electric smart car, right? And this 
weighs a lot more than this with the same amount of power. So I, maybe I shouldn't be so surprised, but really nice to place on the road. Great visibility out the front, no visibility out the rear, but the, the side mirrors actually work better. Like I was driving the new e-tron the other day and uh, it had the digital mirrors and I couldn't see a thing out of it. And this works so much better. So I don't know where all that technology has gone after these years, but this is just a dream come true. Nothing more to say other than that. We're gonna run in, have some lunch, and then the nerdy talk we're gonna go through with one of the engineers later on, sort of the whole design ethos of the car, some of the material choices, the design goals. I wanna learn really about how this became to be. So looking forward to that, but let's go have some lunch first. Well, we just finished up lunch at the Autostat. We had Volkswagen Curryverse. They, I think, are the largest manufacturer of Curryverse, right, Jordan? Uh, Curryverse is the part they make the most of at Volkswagen. Oh, that's what it is. They make more Curryverse than even their own cars. <laughs> Pretty incredible. So we're hopping back in the XL1, gonna go for a drive up to the mountainous region. Stay tuned on this channel because we'll have some cool videos coming here at the Autostat, which we're filming again tomorrow. And um, yeah, hopping back in the X01, get it started, get the AC cranked, off we go on the adventure. Okay, well, hopping inside the X01, oh, <laughs> there's a little key slot here. You don't actually need to put the key in because it's just wireless, but it's just a nice holder. Left foot on the brake, start button, worse to life. Typically when you're in park, the combustion engine's running, but when you're driving, it shuts off. Pretty weird. We're gonna go max air conditioning and cool this thing down and then uh it's really hot out here today pretty crazy turn the uh, wheel left a little bit i hate dry steering it but there's no electric power steering look at those tires <laughs> and led headlights i mean it's really the future on wheels this is where e-mobility really started for volkswagen we're just about to head out and go up into the mountains for a long cruise. What we're gonna do is take the back twisty route on the way there. Really amazing steering in this because there's no electric power steering, you're fully connected. They took all the bushings out for weight, so it's almost race car-like steering on the little 115s. But listen to the idle on this thing. This is the little two-cylinder diesel running away with the AC on max, so it's under a pretty big load here. Just take a listen. If you go on down this way, you hear the exhaust pipe. Pretty funny looking sounding. It sounds a little bit like a lawnmower. Let me see if I can rev it. <laughs> nice. You got sounds a nice, like, nice tractor here, yeah, sir. Yeah, tractor noises in a supercar. It's just the coolest freaking thing. I want one so bad. There's one for sale in all of Europe. It's 120,000 euros, which is pretty much what this car sold for new. So that was a good buy. Okay, merging on to the Autobahn for the first time. Let's drop it in S, hit the throttle. Sounds awesome. Goes pretty good too. A couple little corners coming up here, so let's see how it handles. We're on a road trip for about, I don't know, one or two hours. Great direct steering. We're not pushing the car. This is not a performance. We're on 115 tires. We're gonna go hard throttle to get up to speed. I got my digital mirror right here but it gets right up there, no problem. <laughs> Great, well, what we're gonna be doing is kind of cruising over, doing some Autobahn miles, getting to know the car. We're then gonna pull off the highway, find some twisty roads, and then go meet with uh, one of the engineers of this car, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Thank you for arranging all of this. Hey, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, should be a great little cruise in the XL1. Then on the return, we'll do the efficiency test and see what kind of maximum MPGs we can pull out of it. We've just reached a little section of de-restricted Autobahn, so I'm gonna drop it into S, and we're gonna go hard throttle. 3,000 RPM torque wave building. <laughs> 130, 140, still feels pretty good. Some traffic up ahead, so we're not gonna go too crazy, of course. Brakes feel nice, it does regen brake blending, but it's um, early stages of, of regen blending, and, it, and every time it has to downshift, of course, the electric motor becomes disconnected, so you get a torque dip, or really a torque decrease, uh, you know, every time it has to shift up and down. 
which isn't uncommon from plug-in hybrids today. It's just the technology's gotten even better. But cruising down the highway, I thought it would be louder and maybe a bit more unpleasant. I love the way this engine sounds. This diesel's real grumbly, it's almost like a tractor. I think it sounds great. And um, it just kind of whirs in the background, but it shuts off every, every point it can. We have 35.5% state of charge. Hopefully when we stop at our destination up in the mountains, we can actually plug it in. I'll show you how that process works. Um, but like torque on the highway at least, that's 90 kilometers an hour, wide open throttle, 110 up to 120. It's plenty and it just has this nice, consistent, very smooth acceleration. And with this double clutch situation, really has almost no torque dip on hard acceleration. Very impressive calibration, considering this is 10 years old now. It's really, really impressive. So accelerating up, foot to the floor in S mode. S mode uses the electric motor as a boost. There's 170 indicated. Feels pretty stable at this speed, no issues at all. And you can cover some distance in efficiency. I'd love to know what the efficiency is at high speed. So we're going to try and drive it pretty hard and see what the worst fuel economy we can get is in the XL1. So foot absolutely welded to the floor, 100 miles an hour, so smooth. Air condition on full speed, yep, foot welded to the floor, we're at the electronic speed limiter. <laughs> we're using only 3.8 liters per 100, but as we go we'll let you know how it turns out to be. But 3.1 seems to be the average right now. <laughs> it feels pretty pretty funny at these speeds, I have to say. The electronic mirror is working well. Man, I love this. <laughs> Who thought we would be going top speed on a German Autobahn in an XL1? <laughs> and here's the ID5 in the mirror. So as this truck gets out of the way, Ruth has taken us to some great driving roads, it sounds like. And uh, we've put it into S mode, wide open throttle, big torque, amazing. Great shifting, it's 44 degrees Celsius outside, really toasty. So wanna make sure we don't overheat anything, but we are just hammer down and let's go for a quick cruise. Uh, in terms of total power output, it's roughly uh, 50 mid 50 kilowatt range and uh, let me think about this for a second 32 of it comes from 35 of it comes from the combustion engine and then the rest come from the electric motor the electric motor of course is pre transmission so everything that the electric motor is going doing is coming through the dual clutch and then the combustion engine is on a separate disconnect clutch so it can spin up and reconnect so Let's go hard throttle again. We have the ID5 GTX in the mirror. Jordan's driving that particular one. Just really smooth power. <laughs> Ruth isn't used to riding with us, apparently. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, so pretty good steering feel. We're again on 115s, and uh, we're going to try not to scare our passengers or crash a over 100,000 euro Volkswagen. But it does feel pretty good to just bomb around in this not crazy acceleration but just nice to set in the corner the steering feel is crazy good and the reason is there's really nothing between the steering wheel and the tires we have no crazy steering bushings the ratio is quite quick it's nice even here in s mode there's no manual shifting so i can go to the kick down switch or past the kick down switch and we can get our uh you know full electric boost and you can see according to the screen the electric motor goes into boost mode because it shows us uh, not only using the combustion engine but then the electric machine adds to it as well so we have a combined output but the vehicle tries to target when you're just cruising somewhere around 30 percent state of charge but here we are just stuffing it into a corner rear wheel drive pulling us up the hill with pretty good torque um, but I do think the electric fit. Oh, don't worry, Ruth. <laughs> She's obviously not. <laughs> the, the electric bits are helping, especially at low speed, but not so much at very high speed. 
Um, yeah, YouTubers, sometimes crazy drivers. I would be worried about them. <laughs> but definitely when you go hard throttle, the air conditioning goes very hot because it tries to give you everything it can to the motors and to the battery pack. So here's a big corner, Ruth, hold on tight throw it in <laughs> it's totally fine pretty stable handling actually for what it is the steering wheel itself has carbon on it I'm not sure I love this downward approach I think I would have preferred if this was up here a little bit but what can you say this is really cool great steering feel using that front little tire I can hear just a little bit of tread shaw right on the end yeah there's not much more grip than that <laughs> so it's not meant you know to rip around but just really nicely balanced you can feel how stiff the structure of the car is it's definitely hardcore if you put some crazy fat tires on this you could actually carry some speed but again that wasn't the design target the design target of this was efficiency but at least we know you can have some fun on some back roads like more than you would think I do wish there was a manual shifting function though rather than just drive and sport so We'll meet you over at uh, where we're gonna have a little stop and chat with one of the engineers of the project. But I'm really, I keep saying it, really loving it to the point where I kinda gotta get one at some point. There's one for sale in Europe. We need to get our office address here before I can start buying cars though. Sitting here in the XL1, look how huge the ID5 looks, just absolutely massive. And uh, yeah, love the mirrors, love driving this. I fit perfectly. I've just fallen in love with this car. So, hey, Jordan. <laughs> we have arrived now to the beautiful hills just west of Wolfsburg and some amazing road. It's funny, I think it's for efficiency, but Every time you lift off the accelerator pedal, the AC kicks on, but anytime the combustion engine's on or you're on the accelerator pedal, there's no AC. Of course, we're in the hills. We had to do a lot of climbing. It got really toasty in here. So we are just sweating, but it was absolutely a wonderful ride. It doesn't normally get this hot in Germany. It's about 105 degrees Fahrenheit today, if not even a little bit warmer in spots. Now that we've climbed a bit of elevation, elevation we should be somewhere in the 40 degree celsius range maybe 38 ish but uh, i just opened the back here to help cool down the engine it's doing a little bit of fan i drove it pretty hard so just trying to be kind to it i let it idle for a couple minutes before shutting it off as well and um what a machine i mean it really has sort of the makings of a steering of a sports car it's really neat especially with these little thin tires there's not much lateral grip but you can hustle this thing around if you really want to. Again, not the point, but really fun to do things with cars that they're not necessarily intended to do. And yes, just a bucket list day. I will never forget it. Ruth and I, we were sweating in the car, but we did it. <laughs> it's been six Very years. Special. Six years. I haven't, um, uh, I haven't seen the, the car. So um, I'm very glad to have the possibility, even if I spent much hours in that car during the uh, development phase, yeah, yeah. From, I think 2011 when we've been in um, Qatar, when we made the first presentation. Yeah. In preparation of that, I um, made much kilometers with the car as test for test drives. And um, then when we had the experience fleet, we had uh, to go much kilometers for testing. What was your responsibility for XL1? Um, I was, um, and I had the responsibility for um, the whole uh, technique of the car. Wow, cool. Yeah, so I, um, for, even for uh, chassis, electric, for the body, for the, uh, <laughs> for, for the end, then for, for, for um, and um, I had the uh, team of the um, designers and constructors. I um, had the, um, I made a bridge from the, um, development team to the suppliers and even then to the um, production plant in Osnabrück yeah, when, yep. when there were some hand building adjustments these and there yep. was more, much hand building and when there was adjustment necessary to go to the um, constructor's bag and say hey do you have a solution then I have to go to the supplier so was even for, for, for every part in the car. Yeah what was the working environment like? Um, yeah, you, you have to, to see um, where you can save some uh, cons consumption. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you have the um, shape, you have the um, 
uh, uh, CW, you yep. have the, the, the weight, um, you have the efficiency of every um, part, yeah, of every electric pump, of, of, of the whole engine to um, reduce inner um, friction yeah. and so on. Yeah? Mm. And, um, and the engine was made specifically for this car? The engine was made specifically. We have a 1.6 TDI. Yeah. What we used in, in our, all our cars from for Golf and, and and Passat and so on. Yeah. We cut. It uh, took two. Physically cylinders. cut it. Speci yeah. Yeah. And what was it like? I guess so. It's been. I guess maybe I should ask. It's been six years since you've seen the car. Yeah. But what? Um, why so long? Is it just Volkswagen Group is so big and you get stuck on other projects? <laughs> no, or, no, no, no. We. we um, we gave in 2015 uh, the last car to the customer yeah. and then the project was done. Then we had to do some issues for the uh, customer service Yeah, yeah to um, to uh, take care that there are enough sp spare parts as a process. When our service team will uh, go to the customer, when the customer has some complaints or something like this. Yeah. But that was all done and then um, I looked um, for some new challenge and there yeah. was not a a project like this right, yeah. available in the Volkswagen concern. So yeah. um, I got offered to work for Volkswagen in China and um, yep. then I went to China and worked for four years in China yeah. and um, even um, for a whole vehicle department. Yeah. And um, when I came back from China, then we had a, a Corona situation and, and um, lockdown basically. Yeah, we had um, spent many times in lockdown, so it was yeah. not, not so much possibility to um, to see this get thing. out the car and uh, but i'm glad we could bring it to you today at least yes 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 and I'm, I'm, what I'm is very... your impression of this one how do you yeah, think this... it's holding up yeah this is a very very good condition i think yeah so for charging you had a 5.5 kilowatt hour usable battery pack yes how do you know what the total capacity of the battery was that you put in it i, I think about seven yeah so a, so a, a like good this. enough buffer Yes. Safety buffer. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is from polycarbonate. It's yes. not glass. Right. Yeah, we saved even, even <laughs> saved a, a couple kilos, ounces. Yeah. A few kilos with Really um, a few kilos, with, that much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Even even the seats is half weight from a serious seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, the um, passenger seat is not movable. Right, totally yeah, fixed. Totally fixed. And um, the driver's seat is um, movable and you can Tilt it. I think roll a, yeah. a little bit. But How did um, this anyway. discussion come up to have the seats offset? When did um, this happen? This happened in the beginning of when we thought about the concept of the car. You know, we had um, 2009. Or, or um, let me start at the beginning yeah. of the story. Yeah. Um, Dr. Pich had a um, one liter car yeah. where uh, what he used to go to the um, uh, Volkswagen um, board uh, meeting in 2002. I in think. Hamburg. He drove in from Hamburg. Wolfsburg to yeah. Hamburg. Yeah. That was a, a, a car, um, lightweight. And it was like a cigar, yeah, where the seat was, um, the passenger seat was behind the driver's yes. seat. Mm -hmm. 2009, we made a show car with a um, plug-in hybrid, mm. or, um, or was a, with a mild hybrid okay. yeah, car, with this um, engine concept, but even um, with a passenger seat behind the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And um, then we looked at that car. We presented in Frankfurt in the, um, the EAR, yeah. exhi uh, automobile exhibition, mm -hmm. EAR, mm -hmm. and um, we got a very good um, feedback for, for, from that car. But every, um, every time when the, the, the uh, people stood in front of the car and uh, was not with the wing doors, it was with a, um, with a couple. Right, yeah. yeah. And I said, uh, mm, uh, yes, really good idea, high technique. But it's in, to drive in the traffic, uh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, we thought about um, how to optimize even the, the, the communication in, inside of that car. We, when you're sitting behind, yeah, it's hard a little to bit, talk. Um, yeah, it's a little bit um, difficult. And then um, I think sometimes, uh, someday, designer came and um, showed us, uh, hey, I have an idea. He um, cut the car in the, uh, in the middle, yeah, um, digital, yeah, moved it outside, yeah, or um, and then made some some surfaces behind, hmm. and then we looked from the front, we looked from the back, said, "Hey, 
cool. Yeah, cool. That's <laughs> yeah, and what's that? That was what what we were missing um, before. Yeah? yeah, a little bit more the the um, front screens were a little bit bigger. Yeah, when we said, hey, really, really good because it kept the um, aer um, aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah. We had to find some more uh, maybe uh, possibilities to save weight, but the design was really cool. And then we thought about how to minimize this. Mm -hmm. And then um, we remembered an um, idea from Dr. Peak, what he had in, I think, in his Porsche time, mm -hmm. yeah, where he said, hey, if you, uh, if you make the passenger seat a little bit behind the driver's seat, you can move them more together. Yes. Because you're not sitting with a, a elbow to elbow. shoulder, yeah. elbow, yeah. elbow yeah. Yeah, right. you're sitting, yeah. Yeah? you have more space yeah. e for, for each person who's sitting in the car. Yeah, and so it was possible then then to um, move in the uh, greenhouse yeah. Yeah, to, to um, reduce a little bit, so that we have acceptable uh, acceptable um, acceptable surf, um, space space surface yeah. um, of the you know CV by R yeah, yeah. the mm -hmm. whole surface of the car, yeah. and then we calculated, we thought about it, and we said, hey, that's we can uh, reach our goals with it. And can you talk to me a little bit about the doors? Uh, because the doors. wouldn't it be easier if you just had a normal door? Um, uh, no. <laughs> really? This be. is the best solution? I mean, <laughs> from I, the it's the coolest. From the yeah. point of view, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but from the comfort, uh, comfort point of view, yeah. I think that is uh, the best what you can have. Yeah. And um, I think even for the weight, it's not, um, not, not a big difference. Because okay. um, if you have a normal door, you need a, even uh, reinforcements in the um, A-pillar. Right. And... Um, uh, so and and even hinges, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, this is a aluminium milled um, lightweight hinge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little. Um, it's not so 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 um, so cheap cheap to to produce, but I think it's an eye catcher. Yeah, but the yeah? the point and, of this car was not to be cheap. It was to no no. Prove. And and you have a problem when you have normal doors. Um, you have a problem with the doors because we have here horizontal surface right and if you have a normal door you can not use horizontal surface because you have because you have friction on the um, ceiling yes and mm -hmm. the ceiling will I think uh, vanish yeah until um, I think this is one or two thousand two thousand openings of the door right yeah exactly so then you have to cut the line here yep. yeah yeah and, um, and if, I, if I yeah if I take my arm here and you will get into the car you yeah. will see yeah not possible uh, it's not fun. But in a rollover situation, because you yeah. have to plan for homologation, do you know if any have ever been rolled other than testing? No. It's no, hard to know no. what happens in the real no. world. No. Yeah. No. no. But I, I you did have to engineer a pyrotechnic into the door? Yes, we have um, pyrotechnic uh, screws okay. here in, in, in the door, the fixing screws of the hinges. Yeah, so just it's over one, in here. One here. And uh, one you can cannot uh, see here. So there's one up and front will... and one here, and they automatically deploy, right? There's no yes. no yes. handle if, or anything. If, um, if the car lays on the roof, yeah, yeah. we have a um, steering device with a, a puffer battery. Yeah, yeah, and then um, the um, the head of the screw will be um, blown off, mm -hmm. and then you and can then push. you can, you can push the doors um, outside and get out of the car. But what <sighs> what is your favorite part of the car? My favorite part, my favorite part, I, I, mm, the seats. Mm, really? Yeah. yeah. The I, seats I are think great. The seats, seats are very good because um, they are very, very easy and very comfortable. Very you can, comfortable, You can yes. go for hours in that car without getting tired. Yes. With the, uh, with the seats. Yeah. And um, the second one is uh, this. <laughs> Yeah, this this wheel cover, yeah. <laughs> this wheel cover, yeah. because we spend much work on it. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think during testing, um, on only on proving grounds, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, we um, we use a lot of this part. Oh, really? You say for flying out? <laughs> yeah, they <they're. laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 we had a lot of loops to it, um, to make this work. To uh, to make this work, huh. and I, I think there was a, um, sometimes a, a kind of trophy for the test drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, to <laughs> drop the part. <laughs> cool. To take it from the test track. Well. Yeah, but but uh, but anyway, I, I like this part, but 
because at the end we succeeded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You got it and it works and it hasn't flown off and we drove it pretty fast today. Um, but uh, what do you say we drive it? Yes. Okay, let's go. You, know, you have no airbag. No airbag in this? No airbag. For, yeah, I have. You do? Oh, you well, so you'll be safe, but I'm so far away. You are too far away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Because of the uh, seats, you are right um, in, the, in the rear. And um, even um, if we uh, collide or if, yeah. I, if I break, yeah, you will not touch the I won't um, touch dash the dash. Yeah, yeah, this will still hold so me in. So it's no need. safe. Yeah. How many kilometers have you done in this car? Thousands. Thousands, yeah. Thousands. I haven't uh, collected, by, uh, but I have been um, with this car in uh, Switzerland, I've been in Holland, I've been in um, Austria. Yeah. When I visited suppliers on the test, uh, test drives, test track, so maybe 10,000, yeah. 15,000. Um, for the the strategy on the electric was to always use the electric first and then bring in combustion when needed or yes, yeah. yes. Norm normally uh, when you start the um, engine mm -hmm. yeah, the car is trying to go um, with a battery mm -hmm. and then when the battery is empty um, then uh, the car will use uh, um, combustion engine right but you can uh, choose the driving profile Oh really? Yeah, you you can um, you can say okay now at this time I will drive uh, in hybrid mode How do you because do that? I will save maybe um, the um, energy when I am going into the city or something like this. Uh, and but, was there a way to charge the high voltage battery from the combustion engine to go back um, to full? No, okay. um, just very very um, small um, part of the. Um, of the force from the combustion engine um, yes. will go into the high voltage battery mm -hmm. because of um, of efficiency issues. Right. Yeah, we we call it last point for Shibo. So where we have to go? When we have to... Yeah, we can go wherever. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking we have a view on the Okataj better. Yeah. The sound of this engine is really good. It took us a long long time to have. Uh, really good acoustics in that car yeah, because yeah. Yeah, we have a monocoque. Yeah. Yeah, we have um, the uh, longitudinal, longitudinal. Yes. Um, and um, we have, um, uh, for example, you can see. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, um, and it's all di directly connected. We have damping, but. Um, Damping is always weight. Right. Yes. We wanted to avoid, but uh, in some areas, I think what's not possible to avoid it. Be um, behind us here in the rear. Right. Yes. Yeah. Of course. We have behind behind this um, this shelf part. Yeah. Yeah. We have I, I think uh, uh, two centimeters uh, thick um, and damping net. Oh yeah. And I think it was nearly three kilos oh, wow. yeah. but otherwise you have the combustion engine um, directly behind you yeah, and um, it's so loud uh, direct um, uh, it's it's direct where your ears are yeah so yeah yeah no possibility um, so you had to put the mat in yeah yeah <laughs> so this was for, for com comfort reasons where we said okay yes this um, we have to we have to do we have to take yeah but um, sometimes, uh, in some areas, we made some more compromises. Yeah, yeah. You see when we are going here on the road, on the... Um, the bumpy road, we have some NVH coming over here. Yeah. And you hear that. Yeah. Uh, when you hollowed out the, the transmission uh, sh shafts and everything, does this make it a bit weaker? Or you detune the torque to the point where it's okay for longevity? Um, we made simulations and we calculated. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because that, that's not um, rocket um, technology. Right. That's uh, really, I, I think, normal car development. Yeah. yeah, yeah so we know what's possible and where the, the borders, and then you make a test on the um, on the test track, mm -hmm. and then you know um, what's possible. Right. Yeah, but, but we went to the borders because our, um, even our um, development boss at that time said, normal cars, yeah, we are doing something, then we are calculating a little bit for safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
and if it's if it stands the tests and the durability and, and so on everything's fine mm -hmm. this car yeah we started where we are sure that it will not um, fit or that it will break for example and mm -hmm. then step by step we make it stronger mm -hmm. until until it won't break until so rather than coming down you went up yeah yeah this is interesting a little bit more expensive but at the end um, saved weight right yeah saving weight was the whole goal here and does this feel pretty brand new to you still Because it's, it's, it's really fun to drive this car. Yes. Yeah, you're sitting <laughs> from the ground. Yeah. Um, nearly on the uh, yeah, nearly on the ground. And yeah. you can even if we have some uh, small tires, yeah, you, you cannot feel it. It's like a go kart. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, even in the uh, <laughs> corners. It's pretty and impressive. You can see everyone from outside is looking at you. Yes, everyone yeah, does. Wondering, oh sporty car yeah uh, and it's not a sports car right yeah. it's a um, high efficient vehicle yes uh, and that's what, what if you it's planning to to, um, the, uh, <clears throat> to the people yeah they're wondering it's looking like a sports car yeah how much horsepower is it? right and you say hey 48 yeah <laughs> not possible yeah. yeah this is crazy what a beautiful view here too Turning now in the um, development. Yeah? Now we are developing cars maybe for um, 10 or 15 years, but uh, you are trying to um, develop more functionalities mm. and what you can bring on the car that you have with a software update, maybe yeah. new features on that car that you have the impression it's a new car or yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a different car. Yeah? Um, at, um, yeah. at that time, it was, it was not in our scope. Yeah, it was build the car, get it out, and then work on the next. And now it's yes. build the car, and then how do you support that car as best as possible? Yeah. <laughs> what because an amazing the machine! Yeah, the characteristic of the car today is um, yeah the connectivity, mm -hmm. uh, um, mobile, um, uh, online devices, and, and so on. Yeah, maybe the um, um, the automatic. Um, Driving issues, yeah. yeah. What you have troubles is front assist, and then when you are going to the next level, yeah, um, that the car is doing more for you, that you can rest a little bit, or that you can read a, a book or something like this, yeah. And um, at that time, when we uh, finished the car, it was a inside system, mm -hmm. closed system, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how did it feel to be back in the driver's seat after yeah, all these really, years? Really good. That's really awesome. Good. And what did this EV button do? Yeah, that's it. That's there the there you can choose. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is where you can choose um, electric driving or uh, or uh, hybrid, hybrid driving. driving. Ah, yeah, makes that's, sense. that's that's what it. Yeah, good yeah. question. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and no volume knob. Um. Yep. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, no, no. You, you know, Garmin is, 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 um, was at that time what we used in the um, up. Right, in the up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and we took from the up, and this um, Garmin had no uh, no uh, knob to, no to, to, to make. So you had to integrate yeah. some buttons here. Yeah. And we have no uh, no separate radio or something like this. It's, it's hidden behind the um, dashboard. Right. Yeah, and um, so then you have to um, think about to make a maybe a fourth uh, knob or something like this, or mm -hmm. to use um, um, to use this, um, or to, to, to make new uh, some um, volume buttons here. Because yeah. you see, this is um, I think take over from the VW T5. Okay. Yeah. This um, panel. Yeah. And this is um, I, I I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, but something from but the production line. Uh, even even uh, taken over from another car project. Yeah. yeah. And then we make new symbols, mm -hmm. and that's it. What that was uh, really really special. Yeah. That we brought this car into serious production. It was even for us was a big surprise. And I said, hey, we will we will make more cars. We will sell to the customer. Wow. Yeah. 
And was that pretty exciting when you got that call that they were going to produce this? Yes. Yes, yes that was, it was really um, for the whole development team. I think uh, better than uh, Christmas and birthday and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so happy we got to go back for a ride in this and that you got to drive it again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is this was amazing that we were able to do this. So cool. And then the doors open just with this little latch. And up they go. Yeah, even this latch is, is cool. It's so it cool. Everything about it is so cool. Yeah. Even to open the door, it's it's fun. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's what you can really enjoy. Yeah, and yeah. get out of the car and see. Yeah, all the people people are looking, are wondering, are asking. Yeah, um, you uh, can't have a bad day in this car. Yeah, yeah. Even in the, the, the petrol station, every time when 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 I drove with this car, yeah, the people they they came, they they wanted to talk. Yeah, it's a it's it's a door, it's a really. Um, like to say it's a really door opener yeah yeah and um normally when you're getting in the car to the petrol station somewhere else yeah you're locking your car then you're moving you're going back and um driving yeah continue driving but with the xl1 yeah it's not possible yeah right, every time yeah. someone is struggling um going around the car <laughs> looking asking oh and yeah and, yeah and um there you can really um um, surprise the people. Yes. Yeah, and they say, oh, Volkswagen, I cannot believe. Yeah. yeah that it's so, so impressive and so, um, yeah, so, so, so emotional. Yeah. Yeah. That it's, this, this is done by Volkswagen. And when we then, then tell the people, yes, you, you could have, but, um, um, yeah, we sold it. Yeah, we you could have bought one. You could have bought one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I haven't heard about that. Yeah. Imura was the first Imura um, <clears throat> on a um, passenger car. Mm -hmm. And we um, we made the um, conditions for the homologations with authorities. Oh, yeah. 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 And um, then when we had the... Uh, uh, when we had the release from the authority, yeah, yeah. we wanted um, to... Um, to build it into the car and then um that we that, that we are sure yeah that we are able to um, um that that we can deal with this technology yeah of course yeah and what was the series did this obviously because you had you started the conversation about e-mirrors with regulators yes. and now e-tron has it id5 has it and that's all because of yeah. this car and even it's copied by the competitor yeah, yeah. Of and course. that that's uh, that shows you that you have done a good job <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so cool well can't thank you enough for the ride that was amazing we had some some discussions where we adapted on the size because this um this uh, combi is um, i think from the beetle yeah but a little bit reduced and um even the uh the uh, tachometer or speedometer yeah um yeah uh, has to be shortened a little bit oh the and needle you know, had to be shortened yeah the needle yeah the, the, the needle, maybe I, I can go like this and if you switch on the light the needle is uh um, Lightened as well, yeah, yeah. illuminated. Yeah. yeah, and then we had a discussion with uh, um, developers of this, and they said, "Hey, we, it has to be shortened. Must be a new development. Cost much of money." Yeah, yeah, and then um, we said, "No, we do not have that money. We do not have the time. Yeah, um, we will only make a, a adaptation of this. We will shorten it." It was impossible. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, we went to, we, at, at that time. We went to, uh, to our highest boss. Yeah. Yeah, and um, asked him. Yeah, we said, okay, we'll not fulfill our highest um, um, quality um, expectations, but yeah. And then yeah, he said, eh, take a skizzle. Yeah. Cut it. Yeah. Cut it. Yeah. And, and so the no highest boss made even um, yeah. will. Uh, complain it no it looks fine yeah but it had to be hand cut yes <laughs> i love that story uh, that's an amazing story yeah we had to put uh, some some uh some of this uh, discussions inside because yeah we are normally we are volkswagen we um we are for big series production yeah and every part you have you 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 have to throw into the car and must fit right yeah it must be uh, quick must be cheap must be um repeatable 
yeah and so on and this car was uh, um was not easy was not uh, it wasn't simple wasn't repeatable it wasn't simple wasn't repeatable yeah and and um every um leader of the department who was responsible for such a part we said hey look at this part we will yeah we will sell it to the customer and um you have to to tell us if it's safe if it, if it's um okay if it fulfills the uh, legal requirements and so on they say yeah but we cannot release it right yeah, it's too too expensive and it's uh Yeah, and we have no experience. You, you, this is wood, norm, normally wood with a foil. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, mm -hmm. you, you But know, this uh, is real carbon. No. This is wood. This, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one this is, is wood under here. I okay. can. Yeah, yeah. This is not. Uh, But that this has the foil, foil on it. Foil. Yeah. It's okay. A, it's a foil on it. You can smell it. Oh yeah. When you get into the car, you you, you are smelling wood. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it was the first one what we made from. Um, I think it was. Um, Special material with a, um, a kind of uh, wax or a, a, a glue, yeah, and it was was formed. And I said, hey, you, you cannot use it; it will, it will be deformed after heat tests and so on. When we did the heat test, we showed him, I said, hey, look, formed. Yeah, yeah, looks yeah, fine. It's, and today it's, was really it's, hot. It's no, yeah, there's there's nothing on it. Right. Yeah, and, and then I said, ah, this material. We are not not using in serious production. Uh, no, no, I cannot release. <laughs> yeah, and then we say, hey, what is now? What is now the problem? At the yeah. end, we got the release. Yeah. yeah um, but um, it took a lot uh, of some, internal some, battle. Some, some, some people were not not our best friends after that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But um, I think if you look at it. We did right. Yeah, I think so. You, you made yourself a supercar for efficiency. So we're currently driving to the fueling station and I went to Hannes who just joined us in the car and I was like, dude, you gotta go drive the XL1. Like, this is your baby, it's been six years. And he's like, no, no, you're here to review it. I'm like, no, this is more important. And so he's like, all right. So I'm driving his personal car right now and he's in front of me in the XL1. And we're just heading out to go fill it up with fuel because we've been driving it all day and it's only got a 10 liter tank, a tiny, tiny, tiny tank. So we're going to fill it up and then um, then we're gonna do the efficiency run. But I'm just, the, the coolest part of my job is when we get to get engineers excited about their projects. Sometimes it's because we're one of the few journalist outlets out there that, that gets so technical, that understands and hopefully appreciates what they're working on. And other times like this, we're able to dig up old, I don't wanna say forgotten projects, but projects that, that maybe aren't so relevant to today's Volkswagen world that they're not out there pushing and having people involved and sort of uh, rekindle this this working lifestyle, this insane project that Volkswagen had. It's the last truly insane vehicle they've brought to the market uh, inside inside the brand. So what, a, what an amazing experience more than anything just to get the original team excited about this car again. And the ability to drive it after so many years. It feels great to be able to do this. These are the days at work I enjoy. And man, does that XL1 not just look incredible cruising down these back roads, getting insane fuel economy, looking like a shark in terms of its design. Really nothing else like it. And people are just blown away even here. This is the heart of Volkswagen about this car. Just pulling into the fueling station now. And let's see, <laughs> let's fill this thing up with some diesel. Okay, then let's see. So how low is it right now? Mm, I think it's um, just right before the, um, the red. yellow light is yep. um, switching on. So I would expect maybe seven or eight liters. Okay, yeah, seven or eight liters, crazy. We've been driving it all day. Oh yeah, here we go. So cool. Okay, so 
okay, a little bit more. Yeah, five. Yeah, no, you're right, 7.8. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. And then dumping all the last bit out into it. <laughs> That's the real engineering trick right there. Look at that, for a full tank, 14 euros. And here we are, just filled up the 10 liter tank with seven liters, 0.8. And now it's time to head out. Let's reset the efficiency clock and see what we can squeeze out of it. So we have about a 45 kilometer drive to go. I'm going to reset the average consumption by holding this OK button right there. There we go. I can see just the edge of the ID5 looking mighty fine right there. So we have actually a pretty low state of charge, which is sort of worst case scenario. It'd be good to start full. Let me just show you. Um, here we go, 12.5% in drive, not using sport mode. Let's hit the road. You can see the windmill is off in the yeah. distance, which is not spinning at the moment. Oh, one is right over there. And we're just cruising along. We've really just left and the efficiency has been dropping as we have our speed up, cruising along at the speed limit. Beautiful views out here in Germany. Really loving it. Northern Germany, didn't expect much, but liking it more than I thought I would. Even though we're cruising along with very little battery, it's still prioritizing full electric. And we're almost, even just again starting, we're dropping, we're down in the low two kilometer, or two liter per 100 kilometer range, which is really quite low. Really interesting to see. And you can see the revs are off and our efficiency is going through the roof. As the temperature has dropped, the car is definitely much less stressed and it definitely loves this efficient kind of driving. It's super fun to hypermile it. We got our efficiency down to 1.5, but now we have this crazy hill climb onto the Autobahn. Oh, it's gonna kill the efficiency, this climb. Either way, just an incredibly fuel sipping thing, even considering we're out of battery. Well, we've done most of our driving onto the highway and we've averaged just about two liters per 100 kilometers. Just amazing considering we were doing about 100 kilometers per hour. And now we are just back into town, but I'm just impressed with the efficiency. We've had the air conditioning going this whole time, two liters per 100 K. Super fuel sipping, just sitting on the highway. And in the end, into town, 1.9 liters per 100K is the final number of sort of mixed driving, not holding back, air conditioning on, all worked out great. Well, you join us at the end of a day, the full day with the XL1, blistering heat. I cannot even begin to tell you how warm today was. And, um, you know, this is really the culmination of where Volkswagen is today with electrification, back to where we started. But we have to remember where it all started and that is with the first plug-in hybrid from volkswagen the most efficient combustion vehicle i think ever produced if it's not the case let me know in the comments but it's definitely at the time was the most efficient vehicle ever produced um, not sure what's come out since then but just a bucket list day to experience this car to meet the engineers responsible for it and have some drinks with them and to go for a drive that's why we do what we do to hopefully tell more stories about cars that you and I are interested in here on this channel. So also a huge thanks to Ruth. Really appreciate everything. That was a great day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, just a bucket list day. Won't ever forget it. The Volkswagen XL1. Hopefully you learned something about this very special car from Volkswagen. See you on another episode soon. Bye-bye.